What's going on guys, it's ETA Prime back here again. Today I want to take a first look at the Sunfounder Rasp Pad. Now this is actually a prototype they sent me for a quick review. I wanted to show you guys this because I think it's a really cool idea. They actually have a Kickstarter going on right now if you want to check it out. Links in the description. So this is the Rasp Pad. It's a Raspberry Pi 3 powered tablet. On the side here we have our power in, a micro USB for touch to another board, 3.5 millimeter audio jack, HDMI, we also have brightness and volume control, plus a power switch. On the back, it contains dual 2-watt speakers. They sound pretty good, but I think by the time this needs to come out, they should be a little louder. After all, this is a prototype. As you can see over here on the side, we have the cutout for the Raspberry Pi 3. Now this will work pretty much with any kind of single board computer as long as it is the same form factor as the Raspberry Pi 3. You just pop the back off. You're going to plug your HDMI in and your power. This also has a 5,000 milliamp hour battery built in. On the official Kickstarter page, they claim up to three hours of battery life, and that's not too bad given that it's a 5,000 milliamp hour battery. Not much more room in here for anything else, but you can charge this in your car or from a wall outlet. This was built with the Raspberry Pi 3 in mind. I have one here, but you can also use other single board computers like the Libre computer and the Tinkerboard. There are a ton of other single board computers out there that have the same form factor as the Raspberry Pi. As you can see, here's the Tinker board compared to the Pi. It'll fit right in here and it'll power it right up. So I recently got a hold of some of the new Raspberry Pi 3B Pluses and that's what I'm gonna be using here to test this thing out. It should work just fine. I'm gonna test Raspbian, RetroPie, and Android Auto. I've also thrown a heatsink on here. Got a nice SD card. We're just gonna go ahead and assemble it. It's super simple to do. You're gonna plug in the power, the HDMI, and in the prototype I have here, there are nubs that go through the holes on the board. I'm not sure in the final design if they're going to use screws or not. Now we just need to plug in the USB adapter here. This is going to allow us to enable touch with these single board computers. Turn it over, and you're ready to go. So all you got to do is turn it on. There is a power button right here, and you also have some lights on the front. Hold it for a second. The blue lights on the front should come on, and you're greeted with the SunFounder screen. I do have some other operating systems loaded up on SD cards, but the first one I want to test is Raspbian. So here we are with Raspbian Stretch. I didn't have to install any extra drivers. The touch just works because it's using USB 2.0, and it actually works pretty well. But one thing you might want is an on-screen keyboard. You can install the keyboard easily, or you can use an external keyboard. Now the on-screen keyboard does work well with this screen here, but it's really limited to the speed of the Raspberry Pi. I do have this Raspberry Pi 3B Plus overclocked to 1550 megahertz, and it's still laggy. Has nothing to do with the screen itself. It's just the performance out of the Pi. So we're gonna go to YouTube real quick and we'll watch a video. We'll test these speakers out, but one thing they definitely need to work on before this is released is the volume. Now I might be missing something here, but I do have the volume within Raspbian all the way up, and I've also turned the volume all the way up on the tablet itself, plus the YouTube video that I'm watching has the volume jacked all the way up, and it's still pretty quiet. I'll give you a little clip here. Now I'm recording this with my built-in microphone. The speakers do sound really good, it just needs a little volume boost because it's very quiet, especially they're facing away from you, they're facing up, so it's really hard to hear it in a noisy situation. Now I have a lot of the smaller 7 inch and 5 inch and even 3.5 inch touch screens for the Raspberry Pi, but this one works better than any of them, and I'm, I'm not being paid by SunFounder to say any of this at all, this was just a review unit that they sent to me. I really do like the form factor of this tablet. It also has HDMI in on the side, plus a micro USB to plug in touch. So you could use a PC on here, you could use another single board computer connected to it externally, and it'll work just like this. Like I mentioned, they claim up to three hours of battery life, and I'm sure it will get that doing certain tasks, but watching YouTube on this Raspberry Pi, you might only get about two hours out of it. Luckily, it can be charged from a wall adapter, and that's what's included. You could also get a car adapter if you want to charge it in the car. Speaking of cars, last week I did a video on how to install Crankshaft, which is Android Auto for the Raspberry Pi. Let's test it out here. So here's the phone I have Android Auto installed on. I'm going to go ahead and plug it in. It's also plugged into the Raspberry Pi. It should come up right now. 
And there we have it. We have Android Auto on a 10.1 inch IPS touchscreen and it works really good. I got Pandora installed. You can listen to your music. You can even make phone calls from the tablet itself. Just go right in here, dialer, and some random number. So one of the cool things I want to utilize one of these tablets for is navigation in my car. I don't have navigation. I don't want to spend the extra freaking $5,000 to get it. So I can use a tablet like this along with Android Auto. I'm going to show you the map in action, but before we go there, I'm going to have to skip forward because it's going to show you my exact location if I click on it now. We'll skip that. And we're now in Las Vegas. So Crankshaft is only getting better and better on the Raspberry Pi. It's been out for a little while and the developer of Crankshaft has been working on it. Supposedly there's a new update coming out, hopefully by the end of this week. And yes, it does work a lot better on an overclocked Raspberry Pi 3B+, which I have here. I notice a big difference in scrolling and things like that. And over time, it's only going to get better and better. I'm going to be messing around with this screen a lot more. I'm going to mount this inside of my car this weekend. We're going on a little trip and I definitely wanted to have something with Android Auto installed on it. I think this is an awesome option. Now it's time to move over to my favorite operating system for the Raspberry Pi, RetroPie. Now the touch will not work inside a RetroPie, but we can definitely play some games using a Bluetooth controller or you can hook up wired controllers if you're into that. So I own a few portable monitors. I got a 15.6 inch. It does drain a lot of battery. I can use a battery pack, but I have to carry all that stuff around. I also have to plug it in externally to the Raspberry Pi. This Rasp pad changes all of that. So if I want to go over to my buddy's house and show him Retro Pi, a new build that I did, some new games that I got working on here, I can just bring it over there like it is with my Bluetooth controllers and boot it up. It's an IPS display and it looks really good. I know the camera's not doing it justice now, but the colors look really great and the brightness is perfect for something like this. Here's a little bit of Neo Geo gameplay. I kind of want to switch gears now and just tell you my initial thoughts. We're going to go over prices and things like that. Really, the only gripe I have right now is the speaker setup. It's very low and like I mentioned, I could be doing something wrong. This is also a prototype review unit that they sent me. This will more than likely be fixed by the time that they release these. As for a release date, you know how Kickstarters go. They're claiming May 2018. And price, $129.99 for the basic kit. You get the Rasp Pad without a Raspberry Pi 3. They do go up in price from there. You can get some accessories with it. You can get them included with the Raspberry Pi. Your best bet is to check the Kickstarter out. I'll leave a link in the description. The time that I spent with this was very enjoyable. I love the fact that it's pretty much just plug and play. You'll throw your operating system on it, plug in your HDMI and power, and boot it up. Another cool thing this has going for it is you don't really have to use a Raspberry Pi 3 in here. There are a lot of other single board computers that have cloned the form factor of the Pi 3. They'll fit right in here. Like the Tinker board, the Libra computer, I believe Friendly Arm makes a board that's the exact same size as the Raspberry Pi. It'll fit right in this thing. Over the weekend, I'll have a lot more time to mess around with this. Like I mentioned, I want to get this set up in my car for a little while. We're going on a little trip, and I think it'd be cool to test it out there. If you're interested in setting up Android Auto, I'll leave a link in the description to the video I did. It's really simple to get that up and running. All you need to do is flash the crankshaft image, and you also need a phone that supports Android Auto. You'll just plug it in, it'll detect it, and you can start using the Pi from there. That's it for this video, guys. I really appreciate you watching. If you're interested in checking this out on Kickstarter, link is in the description. It's a cool little item to have if you're into the Raspberry Pi, and you can do a lot with a tablet like this. If you could, hit that like button and subscribe to the channel for more great content. I will have another video on this unit coming up very shortly. Like always, thanks for watching.